I wish there was a break between that and me. Um, Bruce brought me tissues back there. I think my nose was running or something. But how do you watch that and not be moved by it? I mean, you just, you know, Les Brown said once, if um, that doesn't fire you up, your wood's all wet, you know? <laughs> Man. So with all that stuff said, what, what is, you know, just ask yourself that. What is your excuse? And once you acknowledge the fact that you can have more, and if you don't know that right now, I mean, that's the benefit of reading the great stories of people who have achieved, who have accomplished. Because every one of them had struggles. It's the nature of achievement. It doesn't come without turmoil. And the greater the achievement, the greater the struggle. It's always true. Um, sometimes um, things are too easy for us. You know, the comfortable life is often the most difficult one, unfortunately, in the end. Uh, the life with struggles, and we can put them in front of ourselves. We can make decisions to some degree to create more struggle by our goals. But at any rate, once you acknowledge that fact that you can do more, have more, become more, and why not? If you're here and you're going to commit to this business, why not give it everything you have with the time that you have? I understand people have jobs and all that kind of stuff, but if you're going to work 7 to 10 hours a week, why not give it everything you've got in the 7 to 10 hours a week? Give it everything you have. I'm going to read you a few things here from Brian Tracy. I was really enjoying this. It was a good book called uh, uh, Focal Point by Brian Tracy. He's talking about an individual that wrote him a letter after a seminar um, he had attended, and he was kind of a guy that poo-pooed personal development a little bit, and oh yeah, all that rah-rah stuff, and that type of thing. He wrote him a letter, and he said there, you know, he was listening, had his arms crossed, went through the whole thing. Um, there, there was one thing that was said that made him bolt upright and change his thinking completely. When I, it was said, you are where you are, and what you are, because of yourself. Nothing else. Nature is neutral. Nature doesn't care if you do what other successful people do. You will enjoy the same results and rewards. Nature is neutral. Nature doesn't care. If you do what other successful people do, you will enjoy the same results and rewards they do. And if you don't, you won't. It's very simple. It goes on to say, thoughts are causes and conditions are effects. Often I explain the, the cause and effect principle. People dismiss it as being too simplistic to apply to our own situations. But the most powerful principles are often always the simplest. That is why the greater success and achievement, that is why greater success and achievement is possible for everyone. Put another way, thought is creative. Your thoughts are, your thoughts are the causes that create the conditions in your life. Everything you have in your life today, you have attracted to yourself by the way you think. You can change your life because you can change the way that you think. The reason some people are more successful than others is simple. Successful people think differently than unsuccessful people. Now, if you buy that, then the success process becomes so incredibly easy. Now, I do believe part of the challenge is, how is it do you get on the road to changing your thinking? And I, and I, I speak to the choir here. I mean, every one of us have to do that in every day and every way. But you have to be aware of it first. I'm just going to read a couple other things here. Um, over the years, thousands of successful people have been asked, what do you do about, what do you think about most of the time? Their answers tend to be the same worldwide. Successful people think about what they want most of the time and how to get it. As a result of this mental focus, they accomplish more than the average person, even though they have started with no particular advantages. And it doesn't matter whether it's spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, um, your relationship with the people around you. It doesn't matter what it is. It's always the same. Successful people and success being whatever it is you want in life. I mean, not just prepaid. I'm saying everything. Whatever it is you want, whatever level you want to go to, people are going to get there based on the amount of time they spend thinking about it. Unsuccessful people, on the other hand, tend to think and talk about what they don't want most of the time. And they talk about it 
They think and talk about who they are mad at, who's to blame for their problems, what's wrong, why it didn't happen. They don't understand why their lives don't improve, even though they've been working as long as others. They slip into the habit of thinking and talking even more about their problems and who is to blame, thereby making the situation worse. So with that in mind, and guys, it's just a, I mean, I, and I think most people here are already at that stage. You know that that's just a reality. They say that the single greatest factor, Investor Business Daily has this great section on successful people throughout history, and it's always um, their attitude. They're the most of the rubble. They always seem to find something positive in the situation. I thought it was easily interesting in Tracy Brogdon's story. She talks about all those struggles. Now, where would most mind, people's mind be going through that kind of stuff? But she said, after all those things, it was for the first time in her life that she kind of felt helpless. Now, isn't that crazy? After all those things happened to her, that it was the first time that she felt helpless, and she obviously came out of that pretty quick. But it's people that find the positive in everything. They just figure out a way to put a good spin on it, if you want. And then somebody else will make fun of them. But it's, isn't it interesting? So... Here's, here's what I believe the tick, and I'm not going to spend too long on this portion, but I, you know, it is the most important, it is the most important thing. I have a new toy, um, <laughs> and, I, and I bought this toy because I'm a visual person, uh, very simply, and it helps me to be able to just jot anyway, so I figured I might as well use it for something. But, but here's the deal, and again, I'm not going to spend forever here, but every one of us, um, know the reality or we should know the reality that people are always looking for the actions. They're always looking for the thing that they can do to have the success. And that's what everybody wants in the trainings. So give me the bullet points and we're going to get to all that stuff. And kind of Olson talks about it all the time. But here's the reality is that um, here's the reality of it. Um, it's not the actions that are going to create your success. It's the philosophy. The philosophy, how you look at individual situations are going to create your attitude, and your attitude is going to turn around and create the action. But everybody starts to, they're always looking for the action that will give them a result, that will give them a certain lifestyle. That's where everybody's at. They want an action that will create a result that will give them this great lifestyle. But it's the philosophy that affects the attitude. And I always give that simple little example. If I ran down a row of people, one person with bad philosophy but the right action versus another person with good philosophy and the right action. Because people with bad philosophy can still do the right thing. But they see it a different way. Are you interested in the business? No, 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 no. I get to the sixth, seventh person, I got bad philosophy. Are you interested in the business? Sam, no, no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> you, you wouldn't be. I'm not even going to ask you, right? <laughs> My philosophy as a person is, um, is that if seven people told me no, and I know them, there must not be an opportunity. This doesn't work. Seven in a row said no. What are you, stupid? You're going to keep beating your head against that wall? You haven't made any money in three months. That's called a clue, right? That's bad philosophy. The other person goes out, and they do the exact identical same thing. Guys, and this applies to everything. You're your spiritual life and your family life, everything. And they run out and they get seven no's in a row. And they believe that quote of Arthur Schopenhauer that opportunity goes through three phases. First, it's ridiculed, opposed, and then it serves as self-evident. Right? But the opportunity, 97% get involved in the wrong stage, ridiculed and opposed. Or excuse me, 97% get involved in the wrong stage where it's obvious. That's their philosophy. They did the same thing. They got through seven people who all said no, and they got more and more excited because they knew what Watson said, if you want to be successful, double your rate of failure. They got more and more excited as time went on. They just started flying through numbers until they got down here and they found their superstar. There was something I'm going to head at, jump ahead for one second here, that, that Richard Sharkey shared. We had a little team event. Um, the other night, and, and he shared this, this simple, I don't know if we call this a, a, a poem or a philosophical wisdom or what, 
Let's see if I can, I can find it. I don't know what I did with it. There it is. On the plains of hesitation bleached the bones of countless thousands who at the dawn of victory sat down to wait and waiting died. How many of us are one step away from success? We really are, and you never know, and I've seen it a thousand times in this business, where a person is willing to give up right before. Because you don't ever know. That's the challenge. You could be one exposure away in prepaid legal from somebody who gets it and goes, and they run way ahead of you, but they kept you in the game long enough that your philosophy could expand. Paul Meyer talks about it so much that every one of us, and this is the last thing I'll state on this, is every one of us, our mind is like that fish aquarium. That dirty, dark fish aquarium. How many people have ever seen a nasty, dirty, filled, dark fish aquarium? And you can't, your mind, you can't dump out your mind. You can't empty the fish aquarium and fill it with Clorox. Our mind doesn't, pretend your mind is like that fish aquarium. You can't do that. You'd be dead. That doesn't work. The only thing you, we can do with our mind is we can take all the information that we've accumulated up to this point in time and we can throw a garden hose in it and we can turn it on and slowly, bit by bit, piece by piece, we can start replacing pieces of information. This individual, you know, a billionaire, he owns 40 companies in 60 countries and he had, um, somebody was going to show him this joke. And it was kind of, it wasn't a terrible joke, but you, you could tell it was kind of lewd. It was on a computer. And there were about 50 people in the room, and it was on a computer. And it was kind of a sexual, kind of lewd, kind of joke, kind of thing. And they were, they were laughing, and they ran up there to show it to him. And Paul Meyer, realizing what it was, immediately, and this was kind of in a little private situation in the corner of the room, but Paul Meyer immediately said, hey, uh, you know, he didn't want to see it. And the reason he didn't want to see it, and he went on to explain it later, is because he had to protect the most precious thing that each and every one of us have. And it's our mind. And you cannot control your mind once the information's gone in. You can't control your subconscious. The only thing that you can control is what goes in. And that's their danger. I mean, no offense to People Magazine. And I'm not, you know, but if you read it regularly, what do you think about? Well, what clothes are you wearing? And maybe, the, and, I, and I could be off track here. So if, if I offend, just pretend that I wasn't talking to you for one second, okay? <laughs> but there's a tendency, I believe, to start judging people and the way they dress and the way they look and are they sp supposed to, you know, uh, uh, how they're supposed to, appear and we start judging on things that you know God looks on the inside he doesn't care people look on the outside and I wear a nice suit and all that because people look on the outside right but but shouldn't we all be a little bit more godlike and try our best to look on the inside with people but you can't control all that you, once it's in you cannot stop it that's the reason that all these things, whether it's pornography or whatever else, that's the reason they're all so dangerous. That's the reason that buying too many lottery tickets is dangerous. Because it makes you think about winning something for very little. And it starts to drive a philosophy. Now, it seems like a silly little thing, I know. But isn't it true? Don't, I mean, if you buy lots of lottery tickets, don't you think in your head, wouldn't it be great to get this free ride? terrible? Really? I mean, wouldn't that be the worst thing? Wouldn't you rather have a story that you look back and you go, man, I earned it. I paid the price. I dug in deep. I, I lived this life that I can be so proud of and look what I've created because of it. And as a result, you get to keep it all because of what you've learned. Why do so many lottery winners end up with nothing? Because, yeah, they got the free ride, but they paid a dear price for it. So, how do we change it? How do you change it is the real question. And look, 